Hi, in this video we're going to talk about file stream and the database options related to it. Now if you're not using file stream, you should definitely be looking into it, especially if you have database tables that store blob data. Now blob in this case basically is binary large objects. So it could be a video file, mp3, it could be uh, images that are used for facial recognition, it could be word documents, resumes, pdf documents, etc. So any kind of situation where you're storing some unstructured data, file tables are definitely something you want to consider. Now before we had file tables, the way that we used to handle these things was by creating a var binary column inside a table and loading the documents into the var binary column. However, that wasn't really a great solution because the database wasn't really optimized to handle blob data to begin with. It was meant for structured data. The file system, on the other hand, of the operating system was designed specifically to handle blob data. So we wanted to find a good way to marry these two features so that SQL Server continues to behave very well for structured data, but is still able to handle efficiently the, the blob data as well. And that's where file stream comes into picture or more specifically file table at this point. Now before you can enable file table and file stream, I think it's a good idea to show you the options that I'm referring to. Primarily there are a couple of different places where you need to make changes. The first one being obviously under file groups, you'll create something called a file stream file group. Now a file stream file group behaves very similar to the way that memory optimized uh, data file groups behave as well because they're basically files on the hard disk. So except here it's checkpoint files and here it's a file stream file group. Now the options in particular that I'm looking to talk to you about today are these two here. So you got file stream directory name and then you got non-transact access of. So to enable file stream on your database, the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and uh, run sp configure file stream access equal to 2 it's disabled by default so you need to enable it and when you do that SQL Server knows that this database will have certain database uh, this instance of SQL Server will have certain databases that have uh, access to the file system and storing and retrieving files through the file system now the second thing you want to just watch out for here is when we create these file stream objects in SQL Server it's usually a good idea to have a dedicated drive a drive with the correct block size, a drive that's configured for maybe RAID 5, which is the uh, the cheap, not exactly cheapest, but the best value for money combination that you can get in these kind of situations. Also, uh, keeping it in a separate drive allows you to manage the drive uh, size better as well. So there are certain best practices that you're expected to follow when you create uh, file stream file groups as well. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to put everything in the C drive, but uh, when you do it, you'd probably be wanting to do it in a separate drive altogether. The first thing we want to do is we want to create a database. And this database, we're going to go ahead and say non-transacted access equal to full and directory name is equal to file table DIR. Now, non-transact access basically means that even though this table is part of SQL Server, you are allowed to move data in and out of it without necessarily using insert update delete statements or DML. Now not necessarily always a good idea because what you want to do is you want people to be able to modify and access the files only through SQL Server so that you can make sure that the required permissions are being implemented, auditing is being done properly etc. But at the same time when you're doing a, a bulk load kind of situation I found it very useful to have non-transact access equal to full. The best example I can give you is I have once had a client who was a, a retail uh, website and they were performing a migration we made all kinds of changes for them and they had thousands upon thousands of images of the product so they had front view side view etc and we didn't want to create an SSIS package to sit and load each of these files individually into a var binary column and there we used file stream and just copy pasted all the files into the directory and uh, lo and behold it was inside the database table so we'll, we'll, I'll show you an example of that in a minute so the first thing you want to do is you want to create a database and the default options are read only none and full so in this case because I want to show you how you can just copy paste files into the directory we will be using full directory name obviously you can have multiple file tables inside the database and you can have multiple file databases inside an instance so it's always good to qualify uh, your storage using some kind of uh, directory name it's actually mandatory in this case so you want to go ahead and run this 
So I'm going to create a database and it's going to have non transacted uh, transacted access equal to full and the directory name is equal to this. The next one is obviously creating the file group. So you can see here I've created a file group, da 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 da, file stream. And then I'm specifying the file. Now here, even though it says file, it's not really a file. It's a folder inside this path that we're actually specifying. The files are basically going to be the stuff that we insert into the table. So what we're saying is alter the database, add a file. Again, that's mainly because of the syntax that we want to keep in common with uh, adding files to the MDF, NDF, etc. But uh, essentially what's happening here is we're not adding a file. We're adding a file, uh, a folder into a file group called file table FG, which we created previously. So let's go ahead and do that. And the last thing we want to do is we want to create a table to let SQL Server know that this table uses the uh, directory that we just referenced above. And this directory essentially resides in the file group and the folder structure that we mentioned before. So you will see in this case, when you create the table, there's really no need to specify column names, etc., because there is a standard set of columns that uh, get created automatically for you. And we'll have a look at that in a minute. So the first thing I want to do is I want to switch back to my uh, database that I just created. And inside that database, I'm going to create my table. So let me just refresh this really quick. And we have it right here. So if I go into tables and I look at file tables, you'll see I've created a table called resumes. And inside this table, you'll find that automatically there are some columns that have been added. So stream ID, file stream is basically the actual document that we're talking about, the name, the path with reference to the folder structure that we mentioned before, details such as the metadata about when it was last written to access, if it's read only, etc. So you can see that there's quite a lot of metadata information available to us. And the good thing is, because we have gone ahead and specified that the non-transacted access is equal to full, I can right click this particular table right now and you'll see I've got an option saying explore file table directory. And I can simply paste the documents that I want into this folder. And when I do that, you can automatically see that when I select uh, star from the table, they reflect inside the uh, SQL Server table as well, and I can query them, etc. So this gives us a tremendous amount of flexibility in the way that we handle blob data inside of SQL Server. The other thing is that because file table is actually leveraging the underlying operating system and the way that they access files, you don't necessarily have to do all your input output activity using Microsoft SQL Server itself. You could technically just directly access the folder from the back end or from the operating system itself. Having said that, that's not really recommended because the transaction level information that you need to ensure consistency is still only being done through SQL Server itself. So the thing that you want to watch out for is when you want to go ahead and make sure that the files are transactionally consistent, you want to do it through Microsoft SQL Server rather than directly through the Windows operating system. So while the files have remained in the Windows operating system, you can still go ahead and take a backup of the database, etc., and it'll contain the files that are part of the uh, folder structure here. So it's not a separate uh, snapshot of the disk, etc. cetera, that, uh, what's, what you're actually uh, encountering when you take a backup. Everything remains consistent within the database itself, which is good for us. And that's pretty much it as far as the database options for uh, file stream are concerned. Definitely a feature worth investigating. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.